been reporting throughout the day on the uh, Sarah Palin uh, speech that she gave today. She did two things, actually. She gave a speech to Republican governors, and she also, ha also held a news conference, and both of them uh, were strange. Uh, the news conference, because it seemed like Republican governors simply weren't prepared for that, and things changed throughout the process. In fact, uh, we've got information that we can put up that we've learned from CNN reporters who were there this morning. Let me take you through uh, some of that information. Uh, the beginning is that it appears that some of the governors who had first met there weren't prepared for what was going to happen, and uh, they say that Palin was supposed to do this press conference alone. All right? Uh, Turns out then they decided that they'd all stand behind her while she did the press conference and that it, there's a long story behind that, but they weren't ready to s reveal what the story was at the time. I know, this is like a Fellini movie. Then Governor Perry cut her off uh, and the explanation given to CNN reporter Dana Bash is because, quote, we were running behind schedule. Uh, was that actually what was taking place? And now we're getting new information just into us moments ago that some re uh, Republican governors there, perhaps some of the more pragmatists, were upset at the way the entire thing was handled. All right, we've got the press conference, and then we've got a speech that Sarah Palin gives to the Republican governors while they're sitting there listening to her talk. That in and of itself seemed eerie because of the reaction or lack thereof. Let's watch this together. And we'll have our guests introduced on the way, on the, on the back side of this. Let's do that. Remember folks like Joe the Plumber, who, yes, who spoke for so many when Joe the Plumber, remember, he suggested that taking more of our families and our small businesses' hard-earned money, what that does is stifle the entrepreneurial spirit that grew this country into the greatest country on earth. And thanks to Joe the Plumber, people whom he was speaking for felt kind of comforted, like, see, I'm not the only one who sees that. And in, in, in this suggested policy that was proposed that Joe the plumber kind of got out of Barack Obama that day, that was valuable. I'll not forget guys like Tito the Builder. He recently became a U.S. citizen, running his own construction company now. And he on the trail, he was telling us so proudly, he says, yeah, I was born in Colombia, but I was made in the USA. This is the land of opportunity. And man, just these everyday hardworking Americans whom we would meet and and um, again, such a, such a comfort that we had knowing that we aren't the only ones believing in America being the land of possibilities and opportunity, but the federal government, man, it got to play its appropriate role, not in get in the way of the progress of our families and our businesses. Governor Christ, one of my favorite uh, persons whom I met along the trail was one of your constituents at a rally right here in Florida, and his name is Charlie. He's a fine young man with Down syndrome. He's just so proud and strong and tough and Charlie and I exchanged email addresses. The last time he replied, he said, by the way, please quit calling me darling. So I was talking about him on the trail once in a while, referring to, and he says it's not tough enough. <laughs> so today, in your home state, a special shout out to Charlie, to tough Chuck, darling, <laughs> Charlie. It, it, was, it was like a stump speech. Um, let's, bring in, uh, let's bring in Ken Vogel from Politico. Let's also bring in Adam Brickley. He's the blogger who many credit with getting Sarah Palin on uh, the ticket or certainly getting her all that attention across the country. And then our own Mark Preston from Preston on Politics. Um, Ken, I'll begin with you. What do you make of this? Well, it really highlights the dilemma that Sarah Palin has. On the one hand, she wants to maintain the spotlight, the national spotlight that she got as a result of the campaign. But on the other hand, she wants to move beyond the perception of her, kind of left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth towards the end of the campaign and then after the campaign, where there was a lot of scapegoating of her. So she's getting the attention because of the campaign, but she wants to recast herself as something other than the campaign. So it's a little bit of a bizarre choice that she gives what, as you correctly identified, was pretty close to her stump speech in this sort of first real public chance after the campaign in a public setting. Yeah, and, and a stump speech to governors. I mean, th these aren't there. This is not a Sarah Palin rally. These are other governors from across the state. I imagine, you know, guys like Chris and Jindal and Palenti are sitting there going, what am I supposed to do, stand up and cheer? Mark Preston, what do you make of this, uh, this, uh, this information that we're getting from uh, Dana Bash that some of the Republicans there, the governors, were kind of upset at the way this whole thing was handled this morning? 
Well, Rick, you know, the race for 2012 began the day after Election Day. And clearly, some of those governors that were standing behind uh, Sarah Palin have eyes on the Republican nomination as well. And what one of those governors uh, said to CNN's Dana Bash, who, who really did some great reporting today down there in Florida, is that, look, uh, it, it almost appeared as we were standing behind her and she was the de facto leader of the party. And right now, Rick, there is no leader of the Republican Party, and everyone is trying to maneuver right now and find out if they can move into that slot. And look, what we're seeing from Sarah Palin at this point is she is trying to rehabilitate her image. That's why we've seen her do all of these TV interviews. That's why we've seen her do these speeches. She was not able to control her image during the, uh, during the campaign, and this is her time to do so. Adam Brickley, let me bring you into this because you are a, uh, a, a supporter of Sarah Palin. Yep. Uh, when when uh, Governor Perry of Texas seemed to be... I don't know if helping her, concluding her, uh, her speech, rescuing her. Uh, I don't know what he was doing, but all of a sudden he put his hand on her and then moved in and said no more questions. H how did you take that? Um, you know, I'll have to go back and watch that again, to be honest. I wasn't able to watch the news conference this morning, and uh, this is actually the first I've been able to see of it. Um, it was certainly an interesting moment, but uh, for now I buy the explanation that they probably were running behind schedule. It's a conference we paid a lot of attention to these Governor's Association do you, do you think she makes them uncomfortable? Do you think she makes some of the uh, other Republican governors there uncomfortable with all, with her, I suppose, quote, rock star status, as some have called it? Oh, I'm sure she makes several governors uncomfortable, namely the ones who are considering running for president in four years. Um, but, you know, th this is kind of what has to happen. Obviously, she is the rock star. She kind of is as close as we mm. have to a de facto leader of the party right now, and she does need to get her image back under control and put her own closing notes on the campaign. So this is kind of an unavoidable situation, to be honest. Ken Bogle, let me bring you back into this, because uh, rock star status or not, there does, there does appear to be a divide taking place here. Uh, Newsweek called it the pragmatist versus the social conservatives. I mean, you know, you got Charlie Chris in Florida, you got Bobby Vindel, you got in Louisiana, you got, uh, uh, you know, you got Palenti in Minnesota. Uh, but then you got Rick Perry, and it's interesting, if you look at who was standing behind her when she was speaking, it was most of the social conservatives, while Chris, for example, was sitting down in the audience, and apparently, according to Dana Bash, didn't even know that she was getting holding this news conference. Is there a divide? Oh, absolutely, and that's, we're not just going to see a fight to, for the sort of titular leadership of the Republican Party in the next two to three years. We're going to see a fight for the real direction of it between the social conservatives and the fiscal conservatives. And what's interesting is though Sarah Palin really became a hero of the social conservatives during the campaign, really championed some of their rhetoric, some of their causes. In Alaska, she was known as more of a pragmatist, almost a technocrat, mm. bringing people together. And what we see here in this press conference in particular particular and in some of the interviews that she's done is an effort to get back to that she thinks she realizes mm. that she needs to have sort of a wider appeal not just within one element of the Republican base if she's gonna have a legitimate chance at re-emerging for the two as a, as a legitimate player for the 2012 Let, Republican nomination well, well let's talk let's talk about this too because I think this is important you know a lot of people are watching at home and they listen to her speak and they're thinking why don't I understand what she's saying is there a syntax problem here um, in fact, we've got one now. This is MySpace, right? Yeah. This is a MySpace comment that just came in moments ago. You got that, Robert? Oh, my God. She did not talk about Joe, not the plumber. I get confused trying to listen and understand what she's talking about. She says, I feel dumber and dumber by the second. Um, you know, I mean, it's not the pick on her, but there are people who get that perception from her. Uh, Adam, do you think she's held her own in terms of knowing what she's talking about? in the public forum. Well, yeah, I do, and I think she's been especially good in all these interviews she's done recently with uh, Greta Van Susteren on Fox News, with Wolf Blitzer on CNN. Those have all been very good interviews, and she's getting back in control of herself. You know, uh, the person you obviously just quoted, you know, referring to quote-unquote Joe Not the Plumber, obviously is somebody who's not going to like Sarah Palin or any Republican, I'm guessing, to begin with. Okay. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Gentlemen, uh, thanks so much. Interesting conversation. It certainly is the Sarah Palin show in Miami, and it continues through your night, or through the night. Make sure you tip your waitresses. We'll be right back in just a moment with this and a whole lot more. The latest on.